Welcome, namaste. Um, this short video is going to be about my worst nightmare that rapidly became my favorite dream and unlocked a lot of things with uh, explaining the fog of domestic violence um, <clears throat> to me. It wasn't guided astral experience of a dream inside a dream inside a dream and at the end of the video I will get into some manifestation practices uh, to, something to add to your manifesting practice that might just take it to the next level because some things that we are wanting to manifest aren't quite something that we can see to put a picture on. The subconscious uses mental pictures <clears throat> more than words and um, feelings are added to all that, but it's a, it's a recipe, it's an equation. So some of that just all needs to come into alignment as well and then you'll start manifesting. But um, that will be towards the end of the video and be sure to like share subscribe if you find anything entertaining or um, enlightening and or get value from anything right so um, I um, was creating DMT in my body all day long for about a year, about a year and a half before having this dream, so um, this astral experience. So <clears throat> I was already able to um, be tuned into REM waves, brain waves that provide REM sleep um, just easily. And um, I was already having a multitude of astral experiences, transcendental experiences, and deep meditation um, experiences. So, um, it this was down the line of a lot of transcendental experiences. So, and when I um, and lucid dreaming experiences. So. Um, I woke up and I knew I was asleep because everything was kind of like looking with your eyes closed, um, fractals, colors, and uh, not quite distance when you have your eyes just closed. When I, when I woke up and my eyes were open, I could see um, sort of distance, sort of as if to be in the empty room of nothingness that we are currently in, in the cubicle as the <clears throat> energy body. At any rate, um, it's the first time I heard anyone's voice in my head, and I knew it was God because it was God, like, it was just God. But um, off in the distance a little bit, I saw a reflection of a female on the my left, and a male on my right. <clears throat> and I started looking at them because they looked really strange. It looked like they were things crawling, little worms and like snakes crawling underneath their skin of their face and uh, up their neck. So I like looked at, and God told me, um, it, look, they're death eaters. And I was like, oh, sh that was God. So I focused more and um, as I focused more I'm a male so the male um, picture came closer to me neither one of us moved just distance shifted and they magnified as that happened she dissipated back into the fog of fractals into the fog of nothingness and he got more detail went into his face and I was fascinated and I was sitting there looking at it and I saw this worm crawling kind of through its eye and then I saw another one coming 
out its nose a little and then one of them was like out its mouth and uh, the one coming out its mouth like looked at me and I freaked out because instantaneously I realized that this is my rear mirror reflection as well as everyone's mirror reflection and this is inside us all but this is inside of me so that um, psychology was uh, instantaneous and it was um, quite powerful so it freaked me awake and I woke up and I got up and I ran um, to the door ran through the hall to the kitchen and in these moments I believed I was awake in my own dwelling but I've never been in a, a building that was shaped like this ever not ever not ever but I did not know this I was still in a dream waking up from waking up inside a dream so um, I woke up and grabbed at my mouth with my right hand and I grabbed a fistful of like disgusting worms and ran to the kitchen sink and started pulling them out right left right hand left hand and just fistfuls of my fingers would like go through almost like big thick earthworms and it eventually got to where um it felt like I was throwing up, at, but I needed to throw up, and I it felt like I needed to throw up, but I was already throwing up, and it was so gnarly. It was like I had to, like, force myself to breathe through my nostrils, and um, one hand after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other, and I just kept pulling and yanking all this disgusting worms out of myself, and it felt like they were attached down in my intestines. It felt like tugging from there um, as I was yanking um, with my left hand and drawing away from it, one of them broke off and started slicking back into my mouth so um, before I got it all the way out um, I had to grab sooner and I grabbed it and stopped it and yanked one more times, two more times, and a third more time, and it explained itself to me that it was hatred, and it was willing to give up everybody else, let them go down like rats with the ship, and hatred held the seed to fear and envy and greed and all the rest, as all the rest hold the seed to all the rest. In neuroscience, um, it's understood that um, <clears throat> a positive thought cannot hold up a negative thought, a positive chain of thought can't support a negative thought, and a negative chain of thought can't support a positive thought. So there's a lot to that, um, but just as a quick addition in here, there. Um, <clears throat> at any rate, I felt what it was and kept pulling, kept pulling, kept pulling, and another three pulls went, and then it instantly flipped into a rope of time and space of eternity and it was no longer slimy and it was no longer disgusting and it was beautiful it was gorgeous and I kept pulling and I kept pulling and I understood that if you keep going you'll just be done with this and at that time I was still writing a lot of things for um, a book that I still just haven't yet finished just because it is about a lot of nuances dealing with the fog of domestic violence in work, in school, in our day-to-day -day lives, in purchasing things, in engaging with other people in the way that we talk. Um, so Ladrillo, like a ton of bricks, is not quite finished yet because when your realizations hit you, it's like a ton of bricks and either the weight of the world comes and knocks you off your feet or reality has a funny way of lifting that weight off of your shoulders so La Trio is uh, sometimes I put hashtag La Trio right on all of my um, bunch of my posts so you can check out some of that too with some of the hashtags hashtag fog of domestic violence hashtag La Trio hashtag I, I, there's a bunch of them but I got a little silly with some of them um a new wave of thinking, hashtag a new wave of thinking. 
back to the story at hand. Um, I knew that if I <clears throat> kept pulling, I would just be done with my own domestic violence and I would be done needing to try to explain it to anyone and try and, and just be able to just do whatever and not really need to just become the witness and just not say anything and lead by example and things like that and not even ever have to interact with anybody anymore because most of the time when you add a log to the fire it burns hotter so anything we can say can be misunderstood it's all an interpretation project and um, in this moment I woke up again and this time I woke up laying in bed <clears throat> on the side of my face and I was looking at the room I was in but I was still in the room of nothingness and the ceiling materialized then the wall started materializing then the window and the shades on the window then the TV then the floor then coming up then the bed and then my body solidified out of the fractals that is that are that the energy is that we are so it was very um, monumentous of an occasion and as I sat up I still felt those worms wriggling around in my stomach and sucking down and pushing them down and um, in these moments I was also partially um, really learning about Merkaba meditations and embodying the light and um, becoming light and uh, and the war rooting in the darkness and the tree of life in your lungs and um, feeding thoughts correctly and a lot of different mental mapping was being provided naturally um, through my sleeping and dreaming because there's lucid dreaming, there's vivid dreaming, there's lots of other stages of dreaming, astral projection and then there's a thing that's called that I call mental mapping that is um, reoccurring dreams and dreams themselves have a way of exposing your the way you're talking to people, the way you're acting, the way you're engaging with reality and everything um, that happens and um, they will show you ways of unlocking the past trauma and resistance and expand you into unfolding the ability to open up into total recall and your photographic memory will be at your fingertips um, <clears throat> without all the trauma that's used as blocking bookmarks along the way kind of skip through that you don't want to remember it because the way that we are remembering it is very intrusive and invasive on the unit that your body is and um, your your brain took it as um, very much almost a near-death experience and uh, kind of keeps you from remembering a lot of things like that um, so yeah it was it, an experience to wake up and feel like tapeworms sucking back down into my gut and that was uh, brought back the speed of thought of like when I was in the medical marijuana industry and kind of um, twisting and or bending some of the rules just to get what I wanted I kind of like was getting in deep with a syndicate of people who weren't very all together trustworthy all of them you know uh, sometimes there's some things that some people just have ill intentions and they uh, they also have good intentions but all of that gets mixed up and uh, engaging with some of those individuals I I'm very transparent so I was like telling them bro I think I have a tapeworm but unknowingly that I was being infected by their forms of uh, this 
fog of domestic violence that is like venom that latches to your body and leeches up and around where you believe there's pain that's kind of where it will feed off of that and give you that um through the quantum field through um, the energy that's around you the information that's around you because information isn't only in your brain it's also making up everything that there is so every bit of our body that um say your my ankle is, is still rehabilitating from uh letting go of pain and um eft tapping um and meditations and things uh all work and physical fitness and exercise are getting it to where the calcium buildups are just breaking themselves down and my body is just changing all of that and reshaping the the area <clears throat> so yeah like uh, gets a little strange and um opens up into some of the things as to why you're able to read books without touching them or by touching them and without opening them because what if I told you that there was a book that you could read that taught you how to read the book that is your life in a way that allows you to read books without opening them and this transfers over into reading each other's energy and each other and learning from touch alone absorbing information through touching things and um, accessing what that object has experienced in its past so um, there's some movies about it uh, as well and there's a there's, there's a, a lot of information about a lot of all these strange and unusual happenings that uh, seem elusive and seem like they don't have explanations for uh, for the longest time until they explain themselves to you so that is a beautiful gift that I would love to share with you because these are all abilities these are all things that you do they don't just happen to us they're things that we can experience and perform and do so um, just like the manifestation um, practice that I wanted to add to the video and give you a little bit more value um, sometimes uh, you're you're going after numbers or um, or like a job or something and doing interviews and trying to get a, the right fit for and um, people aren't uh, engaging with you after the first initial conversation if if that's the case then the first initial conversation isn't um, closing then all you really need to do is change how you're talking how you're saying what you're saying and then they will hear you differently and be more interested in getting you into the next stage of hiring um, as they are looking for the right fit right and that really just comes from someone who's able to just articulate themselves a little bit and show that they um, care about their future together um, but yeah uh, one of my patrons and clients um, is sort of going through something similar along these lines and I um, I told them to start imagining they're already getting calls and they're already getting on calls and they're they're already doing part of what their manifestation practice is going after so closing the deal um, and there's a couple books that I suggested to them as well and I would suggest to everyone but um, in order to kind of save time and hurry on through we'll get to that in another time or um, what have you closing that gap and being able to like truly manifest them just feeling you and your presentation and then just flowing with yes right um, so 
Imagine smiling faces, accepting the gift that you're giving, and the gift that you're giving is your open heart wrapped in everything that you know. And start picturing a gift wrapped up, a box wrapped up, and start putting your intentions into that gift and what it represents. And then as you're giving it, the box dissipates into a mental picture, an image of smiling faces and their acceptance and their um, gratitude will provide that the gift that you're giving and the gratitude that you're creating with the void of giving correctly will ensure that they give that reciprocation back and there is a law of reciprocation involved in in sales and in everything in everything you get what you give you can't give away what you don't have so sort of find your true voice and start giving that away and I assure you that your manifestations will start flowing like flowing like the river of the Nile thank you so much namaste and have a beautiful day be sure to like share subscribe um get this out to as many people as you think might benefit from it um thank you so much i'm hoping to get be able to get my message to a million people one day and um teach everyone how to sort of use the observer in the correct ways and become less reactive and uh, be able to just slow the moment down allow your brain to think and end that fight or flight response to, that keeps feeding itself and feeding on itself so you can cognitively just come together and create healthier relationships and move through all of this with grace